I just can't do it, Dad. I've something must be wrong with me. I, I've tried everything. I love to fly, but it's those guns. I'm, I'm telling you, they they've got me. And the thought of shooting another man down, Dad. Look, please, will you please let me go back to medical school? I don't want to kill people. I want to help them. I don't think anybody wants to kill people. Certainly, I don't. But you managed to be. There are bound to be lawbreakers, and somebody's got to stop them. Well, you must be right, Dad. I know everybody else feels the same way you do. All I mean is that I'm just not the man for it. If I keep on like this, I'll disgrace the both of us. All right, son. We'll get you out of it as soon as we can, gracefully. I wanted you near me. I thought everything else would work out. I see it hasn't. Maybe it's my fault. Perhaps I failed you somehow. Oh, no, Dad. It's not your fault, it's all mine. You deserve a better son than I'll ever be. A, a fellow like Tommy. I'd be proud to call Tompkins my son, but not nearly so proud as I will be of you when you overcome this phobia. And you will, Carter. You've got to before it destroys you. It's bigger than guns or killing. You're running away from something that, that'll haunt you for the rest of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, this final event in the graduation exercises is a gunnery test, diving and firing at stationary ground targets. Each candidate is accompanied by an instructor in a dual-controlled plane. The planes are equipped with regulation machine guns and are fired from an automatic trigger release on the control stick of the plane. The danger in this test is that some of the candidates might become so intent on the firing of the guns that they forget to pull out of the dive. The first three candidates are approaching the field from your left. I'm very proud, Paul. And you should be, too. Tompkins has done an excellent job with these young men. The next three candidates to take the test are John McGee, Paul Palmer, and Carter Meade, with Lieutenant Tommy Tompkins as instructor observer. All set, Carter? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Come on, Carter. Thanks a lot. Oh, I don't know why Carter's going. Carter Mead is the son of Colonel John Mead, commanding officer of the Sky Patrol. Remember now, don't dive too steep on the target. Level off and pour it in. But don't get so intent on your guns, you forget to pull out. 
Got it? Yeah, I got it, sir. Okay, she's all yours. Okay, let's go. Skeeter, you're part of the festivities, over. Oh, no, he's going to make a speech tonight. Oh, that's right, that's right. Listen, how's this? Heck. My friend... That's all right, Skeeter. We know what you're going to say. <laughs> there goes Tommy. Neat jobs. Very. Faster than the amphibian. And the boys are good with those pea shooters, too. You think we ought to... I don't think anything now. And remember, there never was a setup that couldn't be beaten if the right man tried it. And you're the right man to beat this? Well, I'll do till the right man comes along. Lieutenant, I didn't mean to... Not now. Here comes your father. Congratulations, son. And thanks, Tompkins. Yes, sir. You may be a graduate of Randolph Field. And you may be a lieutenant in the Air Corps Reserve, but remember, you're still a transport pilot. And you're not the kind of a screwball who'd go stunting over a crowd just for a thrill. Now, don't try to tell me that it was Carter Meade doing the stunting. Because if it had been, you'd have taken the control away from him like that. And furthermore, I'd recognize that barrel roll of yours if there were a thousand planes up there. All right, Paul, I did it. I did it because I felt it. I did it because I'm through with these wild Indians I've been riding herd on for months. I did it because... Yeah, I know. You did it because. Because Colonel Meade was my instructor at Randolph Field. And if it hadn't been for dual controls, I'd been a cook goose several times. 
And if there's anything I can do for Colonel Meade, why... All right, just forget that I brought it up. But remember, you can always come back to your regular job. And, you know, we have no Colonel's son on a transport line. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Gentlemen, I read to you from a confidential communication received from Washington. It is believed that the territory to be covered by your Sky Patrol is the theater of large smuggling operations in arms and munitions, contrary to the letter and spirit of the government's neutrality laws. You are hereby ordered to end such operations and apprehend the persons responsible. You gentlemen will investigate any trucks or pack trains operating near the line, or any planes that cannot easily be identified or cannot satisfactorily account for their presence. All right, Lieutenant. The district has been divided into zones, and each pilot is assigned to a zone and will leave it only on orders from this office. Constant radio communication will be maintained both with this office and between planes. Your attention to the following assignments. Ryan, zone number one. McGee, zone number two. Palmer, number three. Doherty, number four. Cook, five. Baker, six. And Fisk, seven. Well, what about me, sir? You stand by to accompany me on special patrol. Is that all, sir? Yes, Lieutenant. Outside, everybody. Good luck, gentlemen. Oh, Tompkins. Yes, sir. Just a minute. Take over, Skeeter. Right. Come on. Lieutenant, what do you think of my son? Why, sir, he's, uh... Will he? I know what he is. Will he make a patrolman? Yes, sir, and a very good one. You wouldn't show him any special consideration just because he is my son? No, sir. I wouldn't do anything for him. I wouldn't do for any of the others. Don't, Lieutenant. Ever. Understand? Yes, sir. That's all. So I got to sit by that radio all day. But do I complain? I'll abide, do you? That's what I say. Do I com... What? Oh. Well, do you? Well, I guess I don't do any more crabbing or... No, sir. Not to speak of, sir. And suppose you run back in and get to work. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's not much of a soldier. Except in his heart. And that's where it counts. Lieutenant, I, I wanted to tell you about yesterday. I Forget it. Forget it. Well, no, you see, it's not that easy. I, I wanted to... We couldn't let you crack up a plane, could we? Come on, let's go. Check. Number seven, continue patrol. Number seven, continue patrol. Number seven, continue patrol. That is all. How goes the war? Oh, say, we're off to a flying start. Those fellas have reported everything from the International Bridge to a loose burrow. <laughs> <laughs> McGee just got all excited about something that turned out to be a busload of school kids on a picnic. <laughs> well, you would join the Army. And you know, I kind of like it. I was too young for the last war, but I... I read everything I could get on flyers and planes and dogfights and bombs. Of course, I realize this isn't going to be anything like that, but we might get a little action. Well, you'll get it over the radio. <laughs> That's very funny. Oh, never mind, Skeeter. I'm sure this is important or Tommy would have never put you here. 
After all, you are assistant chief instructor. Oh, of course, Skeeter. I was only kidding. You and Tommy are doing a fine job. Stick to it. Betty Lou and I will run the airline until you get back. Tompkins to headquarters. Tompkins to headquarters. Tompkins to headquarters. Go ahead. Headquarters to Tompkins. Headquarters to Tompkins. Go ahead. Just completed tour of entire patrol district. Everything under control. Every plane's running right along. Deal scattered clouds. Visibility unlimited. Looks like the Sky Patrol is now functioning. Hey, wait a minute. Something's wrong. Your transmitter keeps cutting on and off. Probably just a little static. There's a lot of it on these hot days. Well, here's the bell up here. Well, it's better here now. All planes checked in on time. All pilots answered calls. Good. Let me know if anything turns up. That is all. Well, I guess I'll have to get some flowers. Flowers? Flowers? Well, sure, for the party. What party? Tonight. Say, what is this? Didn't you hear what Tommy said? I'm to have you two at his quarters for dinner tonight. Bye. Paul, I want to know the truth about this message that Betty Lou is talking about. Well, you see, the button on a microphone makes a perfect telegraph key. So Tommy sent a message to me, dot dash, while he talked to a routine report. That's what you thought was static. I still think so. They made this date yesterday. They're kidding us. All right, you win. <laughs> we used it all the time over three-point radio. How did you know Betty Lou was going to be at the Air Patrol radio? Well, there you have me. Well, where else would she be? Wasn't Tommy out in an Air Patrol plane? Oh, get it. I ain't love Grant. <laughs> oh, well, lay off, will you? <laughs> <laughs> you got Tommy doing a spin. <laughs> By the way, young man, uh, how about that speech of yours? Yeah, the one you had prepared for the graduation dinner. Well, what happened? Didn't he deliver it? <laughs> no. By the time the colonel and all the pilots got through, the program was over. Oh, well, they can't do that to our Skeeter. Let's have it now. No. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. Come on. 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 My friend, unaccustomed as public speaking. Headquarters to me. Headquarters to me. Go ahead. Reporting zone number one. Flight under control. Need working regular patrol flight following coastline. Weather clear. Scattered clouds at 5,000 feet. Visibility unlimited. That is all. Yesterday's flight report, sir. Thanks, Tex. That was Sonny Boy checking in. Everything seems to be under control. He'll be all right. Good man. Yeah, I guess so. He's a quiet sort of a kid. You know, I think he's got something on his mind. He has. His job. What did I do? Morning, Lieutenant. Good morning, sir. I've been looking over your report of the first week's patrol. We seem to have covered the sector efficiently, but we haven't confiscated any contraband or caught any smugglers. No, sir. I doubt if there's any activity on the part of the smugglers. They naturally want to look us over. You think then this week's patrol might bring results? Is that it? Yes, sir. That is, if there really are any large-scale smugglers. <laughs> Washington seems to think so. They're howling for action. Headquarters to Meade. Headquarters to Meade. Headquarters to Meade. Go ahead. I've sighted an amphibian. Number 3XM827. Standing by for check on that registration number. 3XM827. 3XM827. 3X. 
M827. Just a minute. Check. Check that registration number. Yes, sir. Stand by, Meade. Checking on our number. Remember to change that. We should have stuck to night flights. Can't find a thing, sir. Headquarters to Meade. Headquarters to Meade. Headquarters to Meade. Meade to headquarters. Nothing registered under number 3XM827. Nothing registered. Nothing registered. Call and fiddle. Call 3XM827 for identification. That is all. Calling amphibian 3XM827. Come in and identify yourself, 3XM827. He's asking for our identification. Tell him he's got our number. You've got our number. What more do you want? We don't have your number listed on our file. Unless you can prove satisfactorily that everything is all right, we'll have to ground you. And a boy, Carter. All right, Mitch. back to land and ground him. Use your guns if necessary. Call McGee, zone number two. Palmer number three to support Carter. Other pilots to cover holes. Text come with me. Yes, sir. Headquarters to pilot McGee. Headquarters calling pilot McGee. Headquarters to McGee. found this afternoon by the fishing boat Stella M was definitely identified as part of the plane flown by Carter Meade of the Sky Patrol. Pilot Meade met death in an encounter with a mysterious amphibian, number 3XM827. If you have seen or know anything about a plane of that number, please communicate with Colonel Meade at Sky Patrol headquarters. Remember, amphibian number 3XM827. Air Patrol headquarters. Yes? Where? 
What is your address, please? Thank you. Air Patrol Headquarters. Air Patrol... Air Patrol Headquarters? Yeah. Brownsville? Yes? Now, thanks for calling, but if it had two wings, it's not the Anfinius. It's not the Anfinius. That's not it. Let it go. Air Patrol Headquarters. Uh, where? Cleburne. Yeah, how is it my... Thanks for calling, but that's the mail plane. Sorry. Air Patrol Headquarters. The whole thing is my fault, sir. I should never have passed Carter, but he tried so hard. I didn't think he'd ever have to use his guns, except as a threat. No, Lieutenant. You mustn't blame yourself. I saw what happened in the final test. You must remember that I could have washed him out at any time. But, as you say, he tried so hard. He was a brave lad, Lieutenant. In a greater way than mere physical bravery. He went down fighting a subconscious impulse that was too much for him. Hating his job, but doing his best to please me. No, if there's any blame, it's mine for making his sacrifice necessary. But in the meantime, the organization for which it appears to have failed in its purpose. Well, I wouldn't say that, sir. I'll admit the morale is low, but these pilots are untried. They're fighting something mysterious. We'll find some trace of that amphibian. Yes, but none of the calls or letters mean anything. I know it, sir. People have seen it from Albany to Yuma. We've traced down mail planes, transport planes, gliders, models, everything in the world but that amphibian. Come in. I just received this message from a boy in Terminal City by the name of Bobby Landis. Said he saw a plane of that number and the type we're looking for. A boy? Twelve years old. Most twelve-year-old boys these days know what they're talking about when it comes to airplanes. That's the best lead we've had yet, sir. May I take Skeeter to help me investigate it? Lieutenant, you can have any part of this organization that will help you discover what happened to my son. Yes, sir. Mr. Brennan, uh, where can I hire a car around here? Well, you're welcome to use mine if you care to. Well, thanks. I want to locate a boy named Bobby Landis. Well, that won't be much of a job. He doesn't live far from here. Fine. This ought to be the place. And that ought to be Bobby Landis. Having trouble, young man? Yeah, I can't figure how that aileron works. Well, let's have a look at it. Hey, you Bobby Landis? Yeah, sure. We're from the Air Patrol. I'm Tommy Tompkins. This is Sergeant Milligan. Tailspin Tommy. Yeah, yeah, I'm Skeeter. Gosh. Hey, did you phone headquarters yesterday about an amphibian? Omen? Amphibian, yeah. That's what I said. Yes, I did. Are you sure it was an amphibian? Yes, I know an amphibian when I see one. All right. What's that flying around up there now? to walk away. You're right. This is pretty important to us, Bobby. We've got to be sure we have the right plane. Gosh, I'm sure it was an amphibian. You see, me and another fellow have been keeping log on the planes that fly over. You know, numbers and all. Yeah, like we do at headquarters. Yeah, that's it. Well, there's been one plane flying over at night, going this way early and coming back long toward morning. Well, that doesn't mean it's an amphibian. That, that, that doesn't mean anything. Of course not. But you know what I mean, Tailspin. Sure. Go ahead. Well, me and Jimmy Drake had logged the number of every other plane except that one. 
on account of it's always flying at night, like I said. So we're trying to see who gets the number first. And you got it? Well, I gave it to you over the phone. Sure, Skeeter. How'd you get it? Well, one morning early, I heard the plane coming. I looked out the window, and it was thick fog. You know, pretty soupy. That's what made him late, huh? Uh-huh, and that's what made him fly low, so I got the number. 3XM827. Well, that's it, all right. Thanks, Bobby. You gonna ground it? After we find it. That ought to be easy. Land's over there someplace. Did you ever try to find it? No, but there's a big warehouse over there. Do you think you could show it to us? Gosh, yeah. Come on. Hey, Ma, take care of my plane, will you? Come on. You say they fly over your house every night? Yes, and come back early in the morning. Bobby, if this turns out like I hope, you've got a free ride coming to you. In a Sky Patrol plane? Guns and all? Guns and all. Gee! Let's go. Go? Well, let's crash the joint. Keep your shirt on, Skeeter. Well, where are we gonna go? Back to headquarters. Here's the warehouse. And here's where Carter reported the amphibian. This line represents the line of flight. They're headed out over the Gulf, there are any number of places it could go. Well, are you sure the warehouse is the land base? Well, of course it is. We should have crashed the joint. Colonel Me speaking. Hello? Oh, hello. Yes? Yes? Oh, thanks, Sheriff. That warehouse belongs to Martin Bainbridge, the licensed munitions broker. So you see, young man, you'd look rather foolish crashing in there. Well, suppose we'd have found the amphibian. 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 Yeah. Well, it's no crime to own an amphibian. Quite right, Lieutenant. There's no crime committed unless the munitions are transported outside of the United States. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. And that's what we've got to prove. Let's confine ourselves to the problem. This boy says that I make a trip each night. We can't be sure they'll make a trip tonight, sir, but they've been fairly regular. We could follow them. How? Hitchhike? They're probably working with some boat outside the 12-mile limit. But if they carry an extra load of gas, they can make it way across the Gulf. Yeah. If we only had some means of recording the length of the flight. How about our impulse meter, Paul? What's that, Lieutenant? It's an instrument we've been working on to locate lost planes in bad weather. It records the intensity of the magneto impulse. Does it work? Well, here's a good chance to find out. But we have to have the cooperation of the telephone company. Well, I say let's try it. I still think we ought to crash the joint. If this thing works all right, you'll get all the crashing you want. Is that a promise? Tommy, you can explain to the Colonel how the machine operates better than I can. Well, Colonel, the antenna is adjusted along the estimated line of flight of the amphibian and is especially sensitive to the magneto impulses, as are evidenced by a spark in this tube. As the amphibian approaches, the spark becomes more intense. And by the same token, as it goes away from us, becomes less intense. Knowing the approximate speed of the amphibian, we estimate the distance traveled by the length of time the spark is registered in the tube. Tommy, you mean that when the plane starts, the light lights. And when the plane comes closer, the light gets bigger and stronger? That's right. And what happens when the plane goes away from us? The spark diminishes. How soon can we pick the amphibian up? As soon as the engines start. But how far can we carry it? We should be able to follow it well out over the Gulf. Texas at the warehouse, Colonel. He's going to telephone us as soon as the Anflavius. Anfli Amphibian. As soon as it starts. Then we'll tune in the machine. And hope it works. Well, we'll soon know. It's almost midnight.
Yes, Tex. Thanks. They just left. 12, 1, and 35 seconds. I'll turn the machine on. We got it. As long as the amphibian is in place, there'll be a light in this tube. And when the amphibian stops, it stops. Or else passes beyond the range of the instrument. Well, that's possible, of course. Getting stronger. Now it's at its peak. The plane should be practically overhead. Did you get the starting time, Betty Lou? Yes. To the second? Yes. It's now just 12.15. I'll shut the machine off for a moment. We should be able to hear the motors. I'd say it's just about 10,000. Well, Lieutenant, we know how far we are from the warehouse and how long it has taken the amphibian to get here. Now, if we could only tell when it lands, we'll know approximately where it lands. That's right. within our radius. 12, 25, and three seconds. Well, it looks like it's up to you. Yes, sir. I'll check the figures on the map and we'll be off the first thing in the morning. Good. Want any help? Just Skeeter. Unless he still wants to crash the joint. <laughs> miles out to sea. Then it's got to be a ship. There's no land for 200 miles in that direction. That's right. Well, that settles it, doesn't it? I guess so. Well, what do you mean you guess so? What I do is take a squadron and fly out there and blow it. I know all that. But I'm wondering about Carter Mead. Carter Mead? Why... Yes. Carter Mead. Are you... You mean that... What you ask may cost me two valuable men. When with a couple of Sky Patrol planes, I could go out there and bring down their amphibian or blow their boat out of the water right now. That's what I'm afraid of, sir. It doesn't sound like you, Tompkins. What's all this about, Sergeant? Well, yes. Answer me. Well, Tommy just has an idea that... All right, Lieutenant, out with it. I didn't want to say anything about it, sir. It's just a wild idea of mine. If I'm wrong, it may be the cruelest thing I've ever done in my life. Anything official? All we want to do, sir, is go out there, just the two of us, and make certain. We have an old plane that we can use, and they'll never know we're air patrolmen. How about a leave, sir? Just 24 hours. You're determined, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. All right. Take your leave. But remember, I absolutely forbid you to do anything foolish. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good luck. Yes, sir.
Listen, Jackson. I don't care if they do have patrolmen watching the place. You've got to get that amphibian loaded and get it out of there. Is the plane coming? Sky Patrol? I don't think so. It ain't marked like one. Tune in Sky Patrol and see what they're doing. See what happens. Well, looks like we'll have to save ourselves. Yes, sir. We certainly got them right where they want us. Hang on to my shoulder and kick your feet. Let's go. See him before? Been having trouble? Yeah, she can't tell on me. Well, that's too bad. Come with me and I'll show you where you can change your clothes. Thanks. A little short-handed right now, but you'll find some old clothes in here. Step in, gentlemen. Well, boy, we sure crashed the joint. We'd find him here, but not like this. Boy, is he messed up. And that's not from a crack-up, either. They've been working on him with a belaying pen. Carter, wake up. Well, what did you find out? Only that they're on 24 hours leave. Oh, now, Paul, you know Tommy wouldn't rush off like that if he were just on leave. Well, I'm going to stay right here until I find out what he's up to. No word from Tompkins yet, huh? No, sir. Well, I can't understand it. But don't you worry, Betty Lou. He'll take care of himself. How do you know so much about what's going on? Well, naturally, I'm interested in what the Sky Patrol does. That's how I knew you. I saw the graduation exercises. So I walked right in, eh? Yes, fortunately. You see, we're tuned into your broadcasts. That's how we knew the warehouse was being watched. And you want me to tell Colonel Meade to withdraw his men? That's it. So the amphibian can make one more trip. After that, you can raid the warehouse, take all the bows, and everybody will be happy. Except you'll be gone. That's right. That's why you kept and worked over young Meade, eh? You expected him to make his father withdraw. No, Mitch here had to get a little bit rough with him. He was a bit of a disappointment. What makes you think I won't be? Doesn't it seem sort of overdoing the heroics? Sacrificing three lives for such a little thing? 
Now, this radio is equipped exactly the same as the Sky Patrol. You can talk to the Colonel right from here. I'm tuned in on him now. All right, you win. What do you want me to say? All ready, sir. The sheriff's detail has arrived. Good, Ryan. Proceed as per orders. I have a message from Lieutenant Tompkins, sir. Tompkins? A steady, Sergeant. Colonel Meade speaking. Go ahead. Tompkins, Colonel. Have you raided the warehouse yet? Not yet, Lieutenant. Then listen carefully, sir. We've made a mistake. Tommy's code. That's a code message. Check it. I can't understand you. Speak louder. We've made a mistake. Something's wrong with my calculations. I can't locate the boat. But I, I don't understand, Lieutenant. I'm on my way to join you now, sir, and we'll explain everything. In the meantime, I strongly urge you to hold back the attack on the warehouse. That is all. Shall I proceed, sir? No. Hold your men. Call Colonel Meade. Hurry. Calling Colonel Meade. Calling Colonel Meade. Calling Colonel Meade. Another message, sir. Colonel Meade speaking. Just a minute, sir. Colonel Meade, this is Betty Lou. That message of Tommy's was a blind. Well, I recognize his voice. I know, but he was signaling while he was talking. They do it all the time, sir. The real message reads, proceed with the raid. Have located Carter. He, Skeeter, and I are prisoners on the schooner Chican. Hurry. He said Carter was on the boat. Safe? Okay, go on. Well, after they got me out of the water, they ganged up on me and tried to get me to send the message. and I wouldn't do it, so they started knocking me around and... Here I am. Boy, they did a beautiful job on you. Yeah, and that's nothing to what they'll do to Tommy. I'm telling you, these fellows mean business. Hey, don't you worry about Tommy. They start pushing him around, he'll give them the fight of their lives. Well, that fellow's a battler from way back. You know, I remember one time when they... Thanks. You saved everybody a lot. It takes a wise man to know when he's licked. You talked to my father. You sent the message. You must have. So you couldn't take it, eh? Lieutenant Tompkins, the great tailspin Tommy, the man my own father wanted me to be like. He isn't afraid of a little gun, is he? No, but he's afraid of getting pushed around. What a fool I was worrying about whether you were gonna get beat up or not. And here you come back and you haven't even got a mark on you. Well, you're gonna have. I wish he'd have hit you. Boss, that message Tompkins gave the Colonel was a phony. We heard them talking after he got through. They're gonna raid the warehouse. So you pulled a fast one, eh, Tompkins? <whistles> raid the warehouse, but don't damage the amphibian. We've got to use it. Yes, sir, let's go. Prepare to take off. We head for sea. The sheriff's men will look after the rest. Yes, sir. Jackson calling Chicane. Jackson calling Chicane. Jackson calling Chicane. Chicane speaking. Chicane speaking. Chicane speaking. Go ahead, Jackson. The cops have got the amphibian. They're headed out for you. I know just how to handle this. The Sky Patrol's headed this way in our amphibian. Nice going, Tommy. Yeah, nice going, Tompkins. But your friends don't know that we know that they're headed this way. 
You're going to have the pleasure of watching me take care of them with a the one-pounder when they land. Get the men on deck. I'm sorry for what I said, Lieutenant. I, I should have known better. Oh, that's all right, kid. I wasn't sure it worked myself. Uncover the gun and check it. I'd like to take one punch at that guy, Tompkins. Forget about him until after we look after the amphibians. Then you can have the three of them. fellas are expecting them. Now the boss said to stay away from you guys, but I just came down to see that you don't run away. All right, both of you, get over there. All right, kid, get up out of there. You're not hurt that bad. Come on, get up out of there. You know what's waiting for you. Get up. Hey! Nice going, Carter. Let's even this thing up. Where's Mitch? Mitch! Go see what that was. Here, what's the stairs? Let's find out what's in these things.
Let's get off the boat. Hey, but Tommy, wait a minute. Hey, but Tommy, wait a minute. Got him lined up, Fred. Couldn't miss, but try. Good. When I give the word, be ready to fire. Get ready. Jump overboard. Oh, I can't. I, I can't swim. I'm not going to try to put into words my appreciation of, our appreciation of what you've done for us. You know the way I feel, Tommy. I only wish you were staying with the Sky Patrol, but I realize that Mr. Smith and Three Point need you. Well, we're leaving things in mighty capable hands. Good luck, Carter. Thank you. Thanks again, Tompkins. And you, Skeeter. The pleasure's mine, Colonel. I learned him. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Well, back on the job. Yep. When do we start? Regular trip in the morning. You know, Paul, I've been thinking about youngsters like Bobby Landis. There ought to be a lot of boys like that all over the country that are crazy about aviation. Well, you bet. The whole future of aviation rests in the hands of those youngsters. Well, why can't we do something to encourage them? Well, it's a good idea. But how? Well, we might have a correspondence school. No, nothing like that. Just let them hang around the airport and see what goes on. And we could all give lectures on different phases of commercial flying. Yeah, then I could make my speeches. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. They have Boy Scouts. Why can't they have Scouts of the Air? Don't you think it's a good idea? Well, I certainly do. How about you two? Well, I'm for it. Me too. Well, calling all theaters. Calling all theaters.